Hello and welcome. My name is Eitor Faroni. I'm a director of solutions marketing for ALE. In this module, we're going to understand what is our proposition for the network infrastructure in a way that can set the path for corporations to achieve the maximum results in their digital transformation. There are two growing technology trends that we need to pay special attention because they are and will substantially affect corporations. The first one is mobility. And you can look at some of the indicators here, like 1.9 billion smartphones to be shipped in 2018, 270 billion applications download by the end of 2017, and also the number of enterprise mobile apps quadrupling by 2018. So these indicators show that mobility continues to be strong and corporations are embracing what we call the mobile mind shift and consequently transforming the way they do business, the way they interface with customers, the way they collaborate using these devices. The other important trend is Internet of Things, or simply IoT. This is still in, in its infancy, but according to Gartner, it is supposed to have an explosive growth and a, achieve or reach about 21 billion IoT endpoints by 2020. These IoT devices are going to be used both in the consumer and corporate world. And even some devices that start in the consumer world will shift and be adopted by the corporate environment, like for instance, the smart eyewear. So these two trends of mobility and IoT are going to transform, are going to shape how corporations do business in the future. And each one has its own requirements. Mobility asks for connectivity anywhere, and Wi-Fi plays a central role here. However, mobility go, goes beyond just Wi-Fi. It, it requires a seamless experience independent of the media you're using, and that also includes Ethernet. It also requires to support personal devices and what we call the BYOD phenomenon. IoT, on the other hand, comes from a different angle. Here the push is coming from the line of business. They see specific benefits to their productivity or to the way they interact with their customers. And then they come to IT asking to support these devices, to connect them and to make sure they operate efficiently. And uh, also, as the system evolves, we're going to have to integrate them with other platforms, analytic platforms, CRM systems. IoT also will force IT to support beyond what we call the carpeted area. In many cases, it's going to go to the industrial floor, outdoors, really anywhere, expanding the areas that IT has to cover. Obviously, these two trends are going to have a direct impact in the network infrastructure. We're going to need a higher resilience, a tighter security, more wireless coverage, higher performance, low latency, especially when we talk about industrial applications. We'll have to think about a new concept called IoT traffic containment where you create a segregated and isolated envir environment with the right conditions for these IoT systems and the applications that control them to run efficiently. Overall, we expect to have an even higher dependency on the network. When I say that business in the future are going to be shaped by these technologies, I want you to take this really into deep consideration, really seriously. I added here some examples of what happened to certain industry due to the growth in mobility. 
you probably heard about Uber and how this is disrupting the way the taxi industry operates. Another example is WhatsApp, an application that pretty much gives you SMS and voice calls free of charge. Apps like this transform the way carriers charge you. If you remember in the past, the revenue was coming from mainly voice and SMS. Now they totally changed their model to charge you based on data connectivity. Same thing on Waze for the GPS companies or on Spotify, changing and affecting the music industry. And many other examples. Most of the ones I mentioned are related to mobility, but IoT is also starting to show. You probably heard about the Google self-drive car or some connected vehicles like the trucks from Otto, which are already delivering goods uh, without having a driver. These are going to cause major changes in the automotive industry. So you really need to take this into consideration. You could be an early adopter, be informed and prepared, prepared and possibly you know, differentiate your company or become a lagger and perhaps face some market share lo losses to your competitors. So this is something that you definitely need to push to your customers. So how mobility is affecting enterprises? Workplaces are becoming more and more mobility centric. They are building flexible environments. In some cases, employees don't even have their own desks. They share meeting rooms, desks, tables, desk phones, printers, etc. Employees are constantly on the move and they can choose the place that is more convenient, convenient for the activities at hand. Connectivity is required everywhere, most of the time wireless but there is also a good amount of wired connectivity. Users have multiple devices, in many cases their own devices. And each device carries a variety of applications that support the individuals to conduct his daily activities in both business and personal, le personal level. Overall, we achieve more agility, better productivity, and more satisfied employees. What about IoT? You may not realize but there are multiple devices already connected. If you look at the education vertical, there are all, all sorts of audiovisual devices and also robotics and other uh, high-tech devices used in science and technology. In the healthcare, you have blood pumps, temperature sensors, and all sorts of patient monitoring devices. In the transportation, you have uh, radars, um, traffic lights, digital signage to control and improve the traffic. In hospitality, you have all the room automation, including temperature uh, sensors, the door lockers, you have um, surveillance cameras and point of sales for shops and restaurants. And uh, actually in every facility you have things to help you manage the buildings like the uh, heating and air conditioning system, the sprinkler systems. So there is quite a lot and the expectation is to grow much more in the coming years. So. Overall, IoT is becoming a common element in every industry sector. With the increased use of mobile devices, personal devices and BYOD, and mostly IoT, the need for security is becoming more relevant. Cyber attacks are increasing in volume, in complexity and in cost to recover. This is affecting all verticals. Just in the US, 
The number of criminal attacks for healthcare doubled between 2010 and 2015. And higher education reached the second highest per capita data breach cost. If you look at some more recent events, you may remember that a team of hackers was, were able to take over the control of a Tesla modern car from 12 miles away. They were able to control the brakes, the display, and the dashboard. Another important event that happened in October of 2016 was a massive denial of service attack, attack to uh, one of the major DNS servers in the internet. Um, they use uh, hacked cameras and DVRs to do this denial of service attack and brought down uh, many prominent uh, websites like uh, from companies like Twitter, Amazon and Netflix. Another uh, example that I like to, to show is a ransomware that happened in the beginning of 2017 at a luxurious hotel in Austria. This hotel has just changed all the uh, doors with modern uh, door locks and the hackers were able to take over that system and prevent guests from coming into their rooms and the front desk from generating uh, new uh, keys. And uh, as they did that, uh, they also took the opportunity to expand the affected footprint going to the reservation systems and also to uh, the cash system. And of course, this was high season and the hotel had no other alternative than to pay the ransom that was requested. So all these new uh, situations are considerably increasing the challenges for IT and the network infrastructure that need to connect the people, the devices and their unique needs. So let's have a look at these challenges in more detail using an example. So let me introduce you to our fictitious sharp metal steel factory. In this company we have a campus with multiple buildings, two steel plants, a sales office, an administration office, an engineering lab, and even a restaurant that empl employees can use every day. Naturally we have all sorts of employees. Some work on the manufacturing area, some in the sales and others in administration. Each group of users have unique needs to access different applications and also use all sorts of devices. Most of these users expect IT to offer mobility, allowing them to use their own devices on their corporate or their corporate devices anywhere independently if they are connected via wire or wireless. I want you to meet our IT manager, which has deployed a network infrastructure that can support mobility, leveraging our unified access technology. It provides the connectivity for the IP phones and all the computing devices, smartphones, laptops, tablets, and it makes sure each individual have access to their specific applications. For instance, one request that came from the sales team is that whatever they are in the campus, either in the sales office or in the steel plant showing the production line to one of their customers, they have access to the same applications with the same rights with the same QoS. This is what IT has been working on and has kept them extremely busy. Now I want you to meet our head of engineering. He just went to a trade show and learned that there are new devices, sensors and actuators that he can deploy in the plant where they do all the steel manufacturing. He's convinced he can improve the productivity by 30% and even reduce the maintenance costs. So he comes to IT and says, 
I need you to interconnect these devices with my applications that run in the data center. Be aware that this is critical to our corporation, so I need to have my own network because these are special requirements and also I cannot take any risk of somebody in the corporation messing up with these devices or affect the performance of the system. Then I want you to meet another individual, which is the head of security. He also did some research and found out some high definition cameras that can see almost anywhere. He also found some door locks that can be controlled from a central location. With that, he won't need to send people everywhere. He can work with less security guards and open and close doors as needed. He believes he can reduce his operational costs by 20% if he implements this system. So he also comes to IT and says, I need to inter interconnect these devices with my applications. However, this is security. This cannot be accessible by anybody else. I need my own network. So each one of these departments and their systems have specific requirements. Operational requirements, for instance, the freedom to deploy devices when and where they want without asking permission to IT and even to move these devices around. They want their own internet network because of quality, because of security. They want a simple and seamless endpoint connectivity. These devices may also have specific technical requirements. Could be they all need a layer 2 broadcasting. Perhaps they may require a fixed IP address. So they may also require a fixed VLAN. And from the security point, they want to prevent inappropriate use of or access to these IoT endpoints. And they're also concerned with compliance and other security factors. If we go back to our IT manager, when he sees all these requirements, he understands why they want it. But he's thinking about other aspects how he's going to deploy and maintain all of this. Separate net networks turns out into different configurations. What about all the cabling, the operations, uh, the overall asset security, training and support of all these devices? So many factors that the individuals requesting support did not think about. Furthermore, the IT manager can already imagine the CEO and CFO reaction when he requests to buy more equipment in order to have separate networks. Of course, we would love to sell more equipment, but we know in most cases this is not feasible. Finally, the CFO and CEO are thinking not only about the cost of these independent networks, but also about the productivity and efficiency of the corporation. So as you see, different point of views, different needs. So IT has a lot to juggle and to consider. So how can we solve these challenges? The solution we propose to enable the digital evolution necessary for all the corporations is to have five building blocks. First one is to provide a pervasive mobility, which enables collaboration. It has to be IoT friendly, it has to have in-depth security, simplified operations, and also high performance. And the way we achieve this is using what we, what we call the ALE reference architecture, which is based on our main technologies, which are unified access, intelligent fabric, smart analytics, and IoT containment. These technologies differentiate our solution and fulfill all these building blocks that we mentioned above. So let's look at each one of these technologies individually. Unified access is about 
consistent and secure access everywhere. It is based on a concept of a user profile, which defines a set of rules that apply to each individual. These rules include quality of service, network access control, security rules, prioritization, and even bandwidth. So let's take this example of a uh, military base. In this uh, base, the network's access are always secure. Each individual, in this case a soldier, has to provide its identity before he gains access to the network. Once it is authenticated and authorized, he is put into a certain profile, in this case a soldier profile, which defines which VLAN he is going to be associated with, what bandwidth is reserved, what set of priority he is going to, uh, priority rights he is going to have. And as this use moves from maybe the operation center to the training center, that profile follows him. So he has a consistent experience anywhere in the, in the base where he goes. Now let's take, uh, let's suppose that another individual, which is a contractor, comes to the training center. Once he identifies, he also is associated with his own profile which defines the same set of parameters. And using the unified access, you can also define where a person or individual has access and where he doesn't. So in this case, if he moves to the operation centers where he is not allowed, then he, his access will not be granted. And the same applies in this example for a guest. When he goes to the entertainment area, he has specific access with most of the case more restricted uh, rights. Intelligent Fabric is another key and unique technology that Alcatel Lucent Enterprise offers. Intelligent Fabric is all about automation and simplifying the design, deployment and operation of a network. It provides multiple capabilities. One of them is self-configuration. You can literally uh, unpack the switches as you receive, connect the cables, and then go out and have a coffee while the system does all the configuration automatically. It recognizes the adjacent nodes and set up an operational fabric for you. It also supports self-attachment. It can detect, it can detect access switches and servers and their virtual machines and automatically set up the connectivity. It's simple to do moves, adds and changes. All you have to do is add this, the new nodes and connect the cables. It also leverages some standard protocols like SPB, which has multiple advantages over other techniques like uh, spanning tree. Uh, for instance, one of the advantages is self-healing capabilities. SPB allows you to have simultaneous redundant paths where both paths are active. That means better utilization of the, of the links, higher throughput, but also fast recovery in the case of any uh, failure. For instance, in this example, if you uh, have a link that is down, it automatically reroutes. And if I know this down, you know, it still have the redundant path, so you never lose connectivity. And when you replace the damaged unit, automatically the system goes back to the normal operation. So Intelligent Fabric pre uh, allows you to have a faster deployment, easier support, higher resilience, and low, lower downtime. And this was awarded in 2015 as the best network solution at the Interop show in Las Vegas. Smart Analytics is about leveraging the 
information about the users, devices, and applications that we can collect from the network. Uh, this uh, Analytics are provided by the combination of our OmniVista 2500 managed system and the operating system in our switches and wireless access points. At uh, the management system, you can first of all define a dashboard where you uh, specify what you want to see at the top level, what kind of information you are mostly interested in monitor and as you dig down we provide multiple sets of information for instance the top end reports you know showing for instance what are the users that are consuming more bandwidth you know what is their behavior during the day what applications are being used there is a report with application visibility and basically, we are able to collect information not only up to layer 3 and 4, but all the way to layer 7. Many of our switches and access points have DPI capabilities. So we can know, uh, you know what sort of applications are being used and what, what bandwidth they are consuming. We could know, for instance, how many uh, users are using Facebook or YouTube or Gmail whatever applications within a set of about 2,000 signatures. We also have uh, what we called predictive and traffic analysis. You can, for instance, set up uh, your system to monitor certain ports and trun trunks over a large period of time, for instance, days and weeks. And with that, and using a AI algorithm, the system is able to learn what is the normal, normal network behavior, behavior and predict what's going to happen in the future. This has two advantages. can help you understand when you need to do upgrades. Perhaps it can tell you that you know, two, three months from now, you're going to run out of bandwidth, so you should start planning to increase the bandwidth or add a new switch. But it also has security capabilities because as it learns the daily normal behavior, if the system detects all of a sudden an anomaly or something that is not typical, it can send an alert to the administrator uh, with a warning that could be a potential denial of service attack. So with all this information in your hands, you can use to better understand your environment, what kind of applications been used, what is the behavior of your users. Uh, and with that, you know, make both uh, business decisions or use that to fine tune your network policies and optimize the utilization of the network. So smart analytics Analytics provide the visibility and information analysis that help you protect your corporation and make better decisions. The final technology I want to discuss is IoT containment. But before we do that, let me use this uh, diagram from Gartner to understand a little bit about the IoT universe, which is very broad. In an IoT system, you have what you call the IoT endpoints. These are the connected devices that we discussed previously. Most of the time, these devices connect using either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. But in some cases, they even use other technologies like ZigBee, Z-Wave. And in that case, you always have a gateway that eventually connects to your network infrastructure. These IoT endpoints are typically controlled by a IoT platform. An IoT platform can be something as simple as an application running in the data center or an appliance somewhere in the network or even a very sophisticated system as depicted here in this picture. It could, ha could have a section that 
just aggregates all the device information that uh, does all the orchestration, the analytics, the data storage, and even APIs and integrations to other systems. You know, because usually you want to gather that information and leverage to interface perhaps with your ERP, your CRM systems, and in many cases send this information to the cloud or even to interface with uh, other um, business partners. Overall, these IoT systems have a clear business outcome, either an improved in productivity or a more uh, efficient operation or a new way to interface with customers. And what we provide in this universe is the connectivity between the IoT endpoints and the platforms. Um, and this, keep in mind that as these endpoints connect to the network, this could be via Ethernet, Wi-Fi, wireless gateways, and in many cases driving the power from the network itself using PoE. So let's now look at IoT containment. The idea is to provide a robust, easy to deploy and virtual network for each of the business units as we saw before in our example. So you have all the network devices, the IoT endpoints, let's say, they have to be connected on the top of this picture. And then all the applications that control these devices are in the data center at the bottom. The first concept on IoT containment is to have one single network. This network uses any of our switches, wireless and access points. And uh, what we use is, first of all, by leveraging our intelligent fabric technology, being able to configure a very robust, efficient, efficient you know, high performance and self-healing network. And then by using Virtualiza network virtualizations technologies like, for instance, something as simple as VLAN or even better using SPB services, we are able to create virtual networks for each group of devices. So, for instance, we could have one virtual network for the manufacturing, another one for security, and another one for the office automation. Let's go back to our uh, example of the uh, metal industry. What you have here is all the campus with the users and their devices. And now we want to interconnect all the devices for the manufacturing, for the security. And what we're going to do is leverage actually all the technologies that we previously described. First of all, we use the concept of a uni universal profile. In the profile, you define what set of, of users, of devices, you're going to authenticate and authorize and then you classify these devices in groups. In this example, we're going to create three profiles. One for the security group, another for the office automation, and another for the manufacturing uh, devices. And what we do is just create these profiles into the you know, central management system, OmniVista, and then you push that information to the entire network. In this information, for instance, we're going to have one IoT container or one virtual network just for the manufacturing, where only the manufacturing sensors and controllers 
have access to this network and they can only talk to the application that control them. Same concept will apply for the security container where all the surveillance cameras and door locks are connected. They can only talk to the application that control them. So the devices in the security container have no visibility, has no access to the devices in the manufacturing container and vice versa. Uh, we can also leverage our smart analytics technologies to further enhance the security in these containers. For instance, I could create rules in this container saying that I should only see SIP video coming from the surveillance camera and whatever proprietary protocol the door locks are using. Any other traffic should be dropped. So for instance, if you have a hacker that is trying to penetrate the network by spoofing the MAC address of a surveillance cameras, that would be detected and eliminated. And so on, we apply the same concept for the office automation that would also have another container. So in this way, you have three different containers. And if any breach of security happens in one of the containers, it doesn't spread to the rest of the network. If you remember an example that we gave early from the hotel in Austria, where the hackers, by taking control of the, of the door lockers spread to the reservation system and other systems, if they had used this technology, that wouldn't happen. Let's take a moment to discuss uh, on cybersecurity. As we mentioned in the beginning, one of the building blocks to enable the digital transformation was in-depth security. And uh, Alcatel Lucent is not a security company. We don't provide fire firewalls, UTMs, etc. But we do provide a fairly broad set of capabilities that are key to what we call the modern in-depth security approach. All the technologies that we discussed have some security aspects. If you remember from the unified access, uh, we provide authentication, authorization from the users, from the devices. We have the capability to do device fingerprinting, health check of, end of devices. If you look at the application uh, visibility and analytics, we're able to do DPI and uh, do application enforcement, look at the reports, the predictive analysis also helped with the security, detecting a potential denial of service at, uh, attack. And IoT containment uh, also restrict access, visibility to devices, and even contains eventual security breaches. So we do have this broad security aspect. And also as hackers become more sophisticated, they're starting to even explore the operating system of the network devices themselves. So in order to cope with that, we have some uh, new uh, technologies. One of them is called Code Guardian. This was developed in partnership with LGS, which is a corporation that is specialized in security. So whenever we do a new software, uh, we open the software to LGS, which does a thorough review of the source codes, does plenty of tests to make sure that we're following the most up-to-date recommendations. They also have a, a, a capability in this Code Guardian called source code, uh, sorry, called code diversification. What it is is an ability to scramble the object code in such a way that the address of each functional 
software function is different from one switch to another. So if by any reason a hacker is able to identify where a certain piece of the code resides in the memory, when he tries to explore that in another switch, it's not, it's not going to be effective. Our switches also come with denial of ser service attack protection using multiple di different uh, techniques. We also have many security uh, certifications that are very important when you sell, sell to defense, like common criteria, FIPS, GTEC. So as you can see, we have a very comprehensive security approach. So let's summarize what we've seen so far. ALE provides what we call the reference architecture, which is a secure, simple, virtualized network, which is accessible only by the compliant devices, contains only the traffic from the individuals and device that we desire, that provides the quality necessary to run these IoT systems successfully, and also that provides a consistent experience everywhere with any devices for the users in the network. And it leverages all our main technology differentiations from unified access and smart analytics to intelligent fabric and to standard protocols like SPB, which is intrinsic into the intelligent fabric. And so overall, we have a very unique proposition to manage and to enable corporations to adopt IoT and mobility with one single network that is simple to operate, high reliable, and with tight security. By applying the ALE reference architecture, there are benefits for the entire company. The business un unit have a simple way to deploy IoT. They have their own isolated environment where it's easy to do moves, adds, and changes. And therefore, they have minimal dependency on the IT department with a network with, that is, has a maximum uptime. The IT department is happy because their operations are much simpler. They, prov they are able to provide high availability with a system that is multi-tenant, supporting all the needs of the different business units. And most importantly, they are an enabler of the adoption of IoT and mobility instead of being a road blocker. And finally, the CFO and CEO can only have to acquire one single network with redu reduced capex and operational expenses and they can acquire these technologies either in via capex or on an on-demand uh, mode and they can manage themselves or uh, acquire that as a managed service how we provide this technology, this solution, is by using our portfolio. We have a very comprehensive portfolio that provides connectivity from the campus all the way to the data center. And all these products in their operating system uh, have these capabilities and technologies that we des described integrated. We have a, a variety of access switches, uh, some for indoors, others are ruggedized to use outdoors, core switches, uh, a variety of access points based uh, both with controller and controllerless, and all sorts of routers uh, to be used in different environments. Um, and a complete set of management system with OmniVista, and uh, clear pass for uh, some more uh, premium um, policies and uh, BYOD support. So Alcatel Lucent Enterprise Network 
provide the foundation for tomorrow digital business by connecting people, applications, and things anywhere simply, securely, and reliably. It provides an overall improved productivity and user satisfaction. And many of you may think that IoT is something for the future and your customers may not need it. But keep in mind that there are already today multiple connected devices. And most importantly, the network is the foundation for these applications for IoT. So even if they plan to have this only in the future, the foundation and the planning needs to start right now. So this is urgent and this is very important for all our customers.